Now, let me try to go through this question uh, as quickly as I can because um, I do want to do one more question. So, yeah, it says it's a surprisingly difficult circuit, and here's why. Uh, when you look at all these registers, none of them are in series or parallel with each other because uh, the way this network is constructed, um, like they all have these junctions, so none of them are in series. And none of them are in parallel because no two registers have uh, same current. Like if these resistances were swapped, then it might be easier because then you can use symmetry, no current is flowing through here and so on. But because of this asymmetry, it's going to be a difficult circuit. So really the only way to approach this is to use Kirchhoff's rules. Uh, Kirchhoff's rules, as it says. So Kirchhoff's rules. So the first set of rules I want to use is the junction rule, which says that you add up all the currents coming in into a junction, you add up all the currents going out of a junction, and they should add up. So it looks like um, the question labels current through each register that way. So let me use the same label. So I'm going to say there's current I1, uh, I2, um, I3, I4. And uh, here, let me deliberately give the wrong direction of current. So I'm gonna say, uh, so I think, cause I think the current is supposed to flow this way. Well, let me say, oh, I didn't know that. I'm gonna say, this is my current I5. And you will see in the solution, something that tells you that you just need to flip the direction of current. All right, so I have all those current labels. Let's count the junctions. That'll tell us how many times we can use the junction rule. I have one, two, three, four junctions. Right, it's surprisingly difficult. So I can use up to three of those junctions. I need to leave, so there are four, I need to leave one unused. So let me just not use this one and write down junction rule equations for one, two, and three. Oh, I think I need one more label, this. So this is gonna be my current I through the main branch of the circuit. So, okay, let me quickly write down these junction rule equations. First equation coming from this junction, current I is what's coming in. That should be equal to I1 plus I2, two currents going out. Junction two, so I1 is coming in. That should be equal to I3 and I5 that's going out of that junction. Junction three. Uh, I have currents I3 and I4 coming in. Some of those two should equal the current going out, I. Yeah, three equations. Okay, the next uh, set of equations. So it looks like I have one, two, three, four, five, six unknowns. So I'm going to need six equations. Using junction rule three times gave me three equations. So I know as I go into considering the loop rule, I know I have to use it three times so that I have a total of six e equations that are hopefully independent of each other. So loop rule says if I add up all the voltage changes as I go around the loop, they add up to zero. So I have to define these loops. Uh, let me do it this way. Um, I'm going to do slightly um, less than uh, orthodox way of doing this. Let me uh, start from here and I'm going to define one of the loops this way. Just choose a branch and go this way. This is gonna be my loop one, oh, sorry. My first loop, which I will label it as uh, loop number four because it's gonna give me equation number four. And I could define all my loops around here, but let me do the weird thing and just uh, use the same starting point. And I will just uh, make different choices at each branch. This time, I'll go down this way and come back to the same point. That's going to be my loop number five. So what's important here is that these loops don't completely overlap with other loops. So here, for example, if I chose this loop, that would be bad because this loop would completely overlap with these other two loops. I really need something that will cover here. So let me go back and... Uh, let me give this a try. I could uh, start from the same starting point 
I'm being weird. Let me go around here and here. I don't have any different choice to make here. I could just uh, go with my second choice. And then now here I can make a different choice. I can go across this register this way and then down this way and come back to finish the load. This is maybe more a little more complicated than it needs to be. But hey, I'm not going to do the algebra by hand. I'm going to use Sage Math, so I think it'll be doable. So uh, let me write down my three loop rule equations. Oh, yeah, so this is going to be equation number six. So equation number four. Um, I go across the battery. Uh, that's going to give me epsilon of <laughs> voltage rise. And as I go across uh, register R1, I will get a voltage drop of I1, R1. As I go across register R3, I'll get voltage drop of I3, R3. And then I have to go across this internal resistance, so minus I lowercase r. All of the change equals zero. Equation number five, I, I start the same across the battery. And then here, I'm going over R2, so minus I2, R2, minus, and then I'm going across R4, I4, R4, and the rest of the return trip is the same. Final, sixth equation, uh, same start, voltage rise minus, um, um, so here I went this way. So minus I2, R2. And here, watch carefully, the direction the loop is going is opposite of the direction I labeled my current. So I have to remember that there's a voltage rise going across the, the R5 register. So plus I5, R5. And then as I go through R3, it's minus I3, R3. And I still have to return through the internal resistance, minus I, R, is equal to zero. So that's all my questions. Uh, let me, by the way, change this letter E, because um, thinking of using Sage Math, uh, capital E, it's got its own special meaning, and I think uh, conflicting with that is going to be a pain. So let me just uh, change this all to be V. This, um, that's my preferred symbol of our EMF anyway. So I'm just going to use V. Okay, so uh, that's uh, really all the physics steps. And um, what I need to do here is just to write out this um, set of equations. Sorry, I kind of plan this out better. Uh, let me move these equations so that I can kind of see them as I work with the Sage Math. So again, uh, if you want to figure out how to, uh, if you want some help looking using the equation solver, then do help solve. That'll give you the syntax for the function and give you some examples. I That's what I find the most useful. So I'm going to define all the variables. Uh, I have i, i1, i2, i3, i4, i5. I think that's it. And I need the resistances, lowercase r, r1, r2, r3, r4, r5. Um, and then I need the, the voltage V. I think that's all. Um, okay. I need to write out my equations. Uh, let me do it this way. I'm going to build on. Can I do that on the right? Uh, let me just do it. Equation 1. That's I is equal to I1 plus I2. Equation 2. That's uh, I1 is equal to I3 plus I5. Equation 3. That's equal to I3 plus I4 is equal to I. I. Uh, equation 4, um, 3 minus I1 times R1 minus I3 times R3 minus I times lowercase r is equal to 0. Equation 5, 3 minus I2 times R2 minus I4 times R4 minus I times R is equal to 0. Equation 6, 3 minus I2 times R2 plus I5 times R5 minus I3 times R3 minus I times R is equal to zero. Okay, let's put all these into an array and uh, make sure they uh, look the way they are supposed to look. So equations. Yeah, this 
compare, make sure there was no typo. Good. Some orders might change. Let's watch out for that. So I say, okay, I want the solution. This time I'm just going to put it into solutions array. So I'm going to solve the equations I have uh, in terms of my unknowns. I believe they are, yeah, all the current. So I'll say, give me all the current. I, I1, I2, I3, I4, I5, my six unknowns. So it's pretty quick because uh, these are actually fairly simple equations and for computer it's uh, relatively easy to solve them and give you an answer like this. Uh, now algebraically they are kind of a pain to look at. So other than to ensure, okay, so I got double nested array, so I really want to look at the first uh, and the only element and they have first, the second, third. Okay, so if I'm looking at the first element, that's that second element. So once you get a, the hang of what solutions are given, then the rest of the things to do is to just plug in the numbers. So I'm going to use the substitution sequence, uh, the, the syntax that I was using before. So this gives me this equation, expression to which I can plug in numbers for all these. So I'm going to substitute in the internal resistance of 5 ohm, resistance R1 of 15 ohm, uh, resistance R2 of uh, 10 ohm, resistance R3 of 10 ohm, resistance R4 of 15 ohm, resistance R5 of 5 ohm. And let's hope it's, uh, oh, I need to plug in voltage as well. Uh, so voltage of 20 volts, 3 of 20. Yeah, that's it. That's uh, the total current I1, or the I, and let me just get the, uh, all the other answers uh, so that I can just plug them all in. Um, so that's I1, that's I2, and I1 plus I2 should give I. Uh, that's I3, that's I4, and finally I5. There is some symmetry here, you know, this, uh, but uh, like... <laughs> Not all that useful. So uh, I5, this current, when I get a numerical answer, you see that it's a negative. And that's what tells you the direction of current that I picked here, it's the wrong direction. And so the, or it's not the physical direction. So I need to flip it for the actual direction the current goes. So I think for the purpose of entering the answer, they want all the positive answers. So I won't include this minus sign when I enter the answer. So entering the answer, let's see here. Um, so I of 1.167, IR1 of 0.5, IR2 of 0 0.66, 0 0.667, IR3 of 0 0.667. Uh, maybe you could have guessed that these two currents will be the same, I don't know. <laughs> I4 of 0 0.5, and IR5 of, I'm just going to put in as a positive number, 0 0.167. So yeah, that's it. Now, where it is, how much power is dissipated in the internal resistance of the battery? Um, oh, I see. So here I just uh, used the uh, formula or the expression. Um, so whenever you're dealing with the uh, registers, what I would uh, recommend as the power formula is this one. Power dissipated in a register is current squared times R. This form, so you know, there were other expressions for power. Power is, you know, current times V or V squared over R. Um, these, using these expressions correctly used dealing with the register sometimes takes care. And when you use this expression that kind of eliminates uh, opportunities for mistakes. So that's uh, why I recommend this. And uh, so I can just do that. I already know the current through the resistance R. So I can just say I squared R. Oh, and this is how you can use the sage math. So if I simply write out I squared times R, uh, it just gives me symbolic expression that doesn't tell me anything, right? And um, so you could take this and um, 
and you know copy and paste this but you actually don't have to do that let me do it do it this way so i'm gonna take the solution here which i know gives me that equation and i'm going to put that into the substitution sequence so this is my algebraic expression i'm going to substitute in that the value that this uh, that's that equation i equals that implies I just need R, so let me just uh, um, do a second substitution. That seems easier. R is equal to 5. So, yeah, 6.81 watt. Um, I guess that feels large. Uh, but I, I think it's fine. Uh, 6.81. Yeah, it's kind of large, but um, you have fairly large voltage and small resistance, uh, so I think that's right. So, so yeah, this is the uh, one of the circuit examples, and um, so you know, this is a, it's a circuit that involves a system of six equations, and I will tell you that that's not even the hardest circuit you might see, uh, which is why I'm introducing use of Sage math, because uh, once your number of equations goes above three, doing it by hand can be super tedious. And that's where, you know, it's like multiplying two four digit numbers together. Like if I had to do it, I can do it by hand, but I wouldn't choose to do it. I'll just use a calculator. If I have to solve a system of six equations, I can do it. I know how to do it. But if I had a choice, I would just rip out Sage math and just to have it do the solution with a simple function called the solve. Uh, like that's what I would do. I would a um, simple function called the solve. I have to do that in one line. I, my job is to figure out what the equations are and type it into the uh, computer algebra system. And computer algebra system will do the tedious algebra.